everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're back at Brown's Automotive. Jim's got another good case study for us. 2006 Chevy Cobalt 2.2 liter Ecotec. And this thing is a no crank, no start, but it's doing some other weird and wonderful things. Now let's hop in here. First of all, can't take the key out. Key on. Crank position does absolutely nothing. Sometimes if you shut the key off, it'll start clicking and lights will start flashing. There's a button down there, Jim. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh yeah, anti-theft, huh? All right. Okay. That's kind of a manual. I don't know if that's stock or not. <laughs> Probably not. It's made for it. Alright, I mean, let's see, the lights work. Lights work. Horn works. I mean, not, not much else here that can... The yeah, radio works. So keys on. Definitely no crank. But right now it's not doing that weird clicky thing. Let me turn the key off, right, before it was? Yeah, I don't know if it's plugged in or not. Oh, do you have the charger on it? Or, oh. yeah, they're, they're plugged in. What, what was uh, what was unplugged before? Oh, okay. So we got some clicky relays, all right. Once in a while, that's the ignition coil pack. But everything else is in and in place, as far as we can tell. Engine computer is right here. Try again. 89,000 miles. You got clicky relays. Nothing when you turn the crank. Key off, clicking stops. Okay. Well, that's that's a good start. So next step will be. There's a ghost in here, that's the problem, Jim. How are we gonna get rid of it? <laughs> I don't know. A couple of times when I turned the switch off with uh -huh. the relay in, it would actually try to turn the starter up with the switch off. With the with the key off. I heard it when it was clicking this like the starter solenoid was going dish dish dish, you well, know. A few times it, it actually spin the engine. It would spin the engine over. No kidding. Just off and on. Off and on, off and on. Okay. So a ghost. Wiring diagram. Here's the first page. This is the engine control module, OEM diagram. So let's let's pick a direction here. Since stuff doesn't work, let's focus on how do we make the starter crank over. So for that we need to go to another diagram. We can pull up a colored Mitchell diagram here. And we'll find our starter. Powertrain relay, secondary injection pump, there's the ignition coils, injectors, fuel pump, and all right, let me find the starter circuit. You might wonder, yeah, why didn't you uh, plug in a scanner right away? Yeah, it didn't feel like it. Let's just chase this starter circuit. Should be on a relay. A couple easy checks. And we'll go from there. All right. A good place to start is the crank relay. Here's our starter motor. What does the starter motor need? It needs power on this terminal to do its thing. It's supplied by the load side of the crank relay. Now, on the load side, this crank fuse 30. 30 amp straight to the battery. So easy check. One, we have to have constant power here. And two, we can see if, just jump those two contacts, see if the starter spins. Load side. Control side. The control, the ground side is switched by the engine control module, ECM, okay? And then the um, power feed to the control side of that relay comes from our park neutral 
safety switch. So in neutral or park, you'll get power from these fuses in run and crank. So let's find this crank relay. That'll be a great place to get direction. And where is our cover for the relay box? Okay, here is our layout of the fuse box. Crank relay is right there. And so he's got his his box. So he's gonna use his fancy tool. No, it won't do it. Won't do it. All right, I'll, I'll use my method and see if I can make it crank. Maybe it's not the right one. Maybe it's this guy right here. I actually have one of these tools, but I've only used it once. I don't trust it. <laughs> All right, it cranks. So what? So what is that relay for then, Jim? Let's uh, let's take it one step at a time here. So is this is this the crank relay? They're all the same. Well, what goes in here then? Because there's nothing on the diagram that should go there. That's like a blank spot. At least by this diagram, right? We want to get ahead of ourselves here. Let me shut the key off, so we know it cranks. So at least we eliminated this part of the relay. Let's focus on the control side. All right, we got our nice bright test light set up. It's on the four amp setting. Setting. <laughs> so this guy, let's just double check the crank relay. Pins 30 and 87, that's the load side. So if you flip it over, the top right should be constant power. So we have our test light going to ground. If we check the top right, sure enough, we have good power. And we already knew that since the car cranks. We can go the other way, check continuity through the starter solenoid, and we know it's good, but just to make sure, it actually clicked. So there's a you know four amps, not quite enough to turn on that starter solenoid, but there is continuity through there. Now, control side. Let's go back to the diagram. We'll change our test light to the one amp setting since that circuit is a low amp circuit and do the two checks on those two pins. First check I want to do is connect the test light from battery positive to this pin here, turn the key to crank. Can this computer ground that pin? That's my first check right now. And that's that will be pin um, 86 I guess all right I changed my mind here let's check this pin for power when we turn the key to crank so we pin 85 and pin 85 is if you look at this way bottom right corner so test light from battery positive well actually we'll go battery negative now make sure the test light works sure does bottom right corner Jim do you want to hold the key in the crank position that's the crank we got nothing there interesting all right stay there turn it key off please let's check the other pin coming from battery positive now see if the computer can ground that pin uh oh dim light Turn the key to crank. Okay, we lost the light there. Let's check the other pin. Uh, turn the key off. And then crank. Nothing there. I'm grounding that pin now and crank. Turn the key to crank, Jim. And then key off. Okay. So basically, all our checks fail. Both pins are, let's say, compromised. All right, 
So the engine control module A could not ground this pin and B we had no power going to a crank relay when we turned the key to crank in the run crank position going through this tree. So is there one problem or is there multiple problems? It could be a common problem, sure. Maybe a bad you know, power feed coming to here. We can go right to this backup fuse, park neutral fuse, and um, see if we're getting power in the run and crank. So let's let's find these guys and just do, double check that. So key is in the run position, and right here we have our backup fuse, ECM trans, and park neutral. Let's just go through those. The first one, power on both sides, yes. Second one, power on both sides, yes. Third one, power on both sides, yes. So, we at least know in the run crank we're getting power to here to the park neutral safety switch. That's good. <laughs> now, why weren't we getting power to our crank relay? Very, very strange. Actually, in run, we should have power at the crank relay, at that uh, power feed to the control pin. We don't, you don't even need to crank it because in the run, if this has power, it should go all the way through park or neutral, all the way to here. So let's at least track that down. Clicky, clicky, clicky. So again, the control pins, it could be either one of these, 85 or 86. So this one or this one, let's just see something change. I grounded that, it stopped clicking. Very strange. Does that mean that's a control pin going to the PCM? We could do a voltage measurement on there, put on the scope. Oh look, we got power here right now. Like we're supposed to. Key off. Key on. Crank it. Good. We have power. I like it. So that pin checks out. That is our power feed to the crank relay. So for now, that's good. Let's move on to the control pin now. So let's simulate that we have power, make sure test light works, going to the control pin right now in the run crank position. Turn the key to crank, that guy should light up. Turn the key to crank, absolutely nothing. So, let's just double check. Again, back to ground. Test light works. Key is on. Key is off. We can even check if we put in gear. See the test light right through there. Put in reverse, that goes out. Put in neutral, it lights up. Park neutral safety switch, good. No crank still. All right, now we're down to one pin, the control pin, like I thought, that goes to our engine control module, starter, relay, control. So the PCM, for some reason, cannot ground that pin. It can be an input problem, or it could be PCM power ground side, you know, missing a power ground. Or it could just be a bad PCM. So we're, we're narrowing it down pretty quickly. Now we have to go for this engine computer. Okay, powers and grounds to the engine computer. Start from the top. Powertrain relay, that's the one that's really clicking hard. And what controls that? Well, the engine computer, ECM. How does the engine computer know when to turn on the powertrain relay control? Well, let's see. 
It has a constant battery power here on C152. And then there's an ignition switch, accessory and run. The wire goes through the BCM to accessory voltage. And then we have this run crank relay, not the same as the crank relay, battery positive feed. That is controlled by the BCM. So the BCM turns that on, then the relay clicks, ECM transfused. So fuses are always great places to check for, for power. So let's say you turn the key to run. That run crank relay should be powered up by the BCM. It'll click, it'll send power through the ECM transfuse, 15 amp, right to the engine computer. And actually, we just checked this one. It was in that row of three fuses, you know, the backup, ECM trans, and uh, park neutral. And that was hot in run. That's good. However, it wasn't making that clicky sound when we tested it, so maybe we should get it to act up. You know, click, 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 click. Put our test light on there and see if that relay is clicking, then, then we would go after the BCM because that's what controls the run crank relay, correct? So this is tied into the BCM, which is a little confusing. Usually the ignition key just directly sends power to the PCM or you know through a relay or something. But here the BCM's in charge of that. Run crank relay control. Interesting. We haven't gotten the scanner out yet. But let's get it to you know do its tappy thing and measure the power at this ECM transfuse 15 amp. The key's on, it's clicking at the 15 amp fuse. We got a bright light. And if you just feel the relays, I know, not 100%, but the run crank is not clicking, the powertrain is clicking. So we don't expect that light to flash. However, the PCM is doing something weird. And again, we can verify that. We do have power there, that's good. The car's ready to crank. The PCM is A, chattering the powertrain control relay. B, cannot ground our crank relay. So run crank relay is fine. It's feeding power through the ECM transfuse. However, something's going on with the PCM that it is, this switch right here is going da -da 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 -da, clicking the powertrain control relay. Awesome. I think we have to go for PCM powers and grounds here. Here they are. I only see one ground. Pin C273 G105. Let's get there. Let's check that ground. So looking at connector views, which one is C1, which one's C2? Well, you can tell by C1 has only 56 pins. We're going after pin 73. Is that right? Ground is... 73 and C2. So, go to C2. There you go. 73 is actually a big fat pin on the big connector. Easy enough. 73 ground, black and white wire. So, you know what? At this point, I'm just going to unplug the engine computer because getting to those wires you still need to take off this stupid little plastic cap and if the problem's here and we fix it then we'll know the problem's here <laughs> I know Keith says don't unplug anything but in this case if we're chasing main powers and grounds that's what we're gonna do there's a little Crusty, isn't it? Let me get that off. Alright, PCM connector. C1 is unplugged. 
moment of truth. Is it going to be a bad ground? If it is, this will be way too easy. So test light, we'll get in the picture here. If we touch it to a known good ground, it'll light up. Let's check this pin. There it is. There it is. Test light lights on a good ground. Pin 73, making good contact. We're basically done. Now, G105, let's look that up. So on G105, we have a whole bunch of good stuff. Ignition control module, secondary air, transmission control module, park neutral position switch, mass airflow, and PCM. So that is a key ground. Now, let's see where it lives. So diagrams, electrical OE, let's go to locations, the G105, oh come on, stop it, this is the first time all data is acted up here, G105, let's see what it came up with, eight suggestions, oh come on, G105. Ugh. All right, here we go. Locations G105. Let's try that. See what we come up with here. Here's a really bad reception. That's why I was fussing at me. Ooh, I think I see it. Right there. The green and the crusty. Right past the oil dipstick. Get a little light on there. You see that? That guy, there's an eyelet, attaches right to the transmission housing, and it looks pretty bad. So we have to check this before we touch it. So I'm going to touch my test light coming from power, and we know the test light's good. We touch it right on the crusty part, and it's basically crumbling. And the uh, test light's definitely not lighting. That's good. <laughs> we can touch it on the stud. It's all rusty. It, it looks pretty bad. Um, can we do a bypass test before we touch this thing? Or we can actually... There it is. I guess we can fix it up. Unscrew that nut. Spray it down. Tighten it up and we'll, uh, we'll be done with this thing. Well, Lee, there's your problem. That just came right off, no effort. So even if we were grounding one of these wires, we need to ground all of these wires to do a proper bypass test. Can't jump the gun. So here we go. We got a little pigtail. Four, looks like four wires. They are actually five wires, really crusty. So we'll have to clean them off, put a new isla on there, crimp it, and then clean up that mess. And then we can do a real check. All right, we got some couple new islets soldered on and screwed on right there. I'm gonna hit the key, see what happens. Come on, car. 89, 24, 54. No! <laughs> and the, the key you can't take out ever, Jim, except for if you press that button? You have to push that button every time. Okay. So that works. Lights work. So it's not happy about something in the crank position. I'm going to leave the key on and let's use your uh, little magic box to jump that guy, spin it over. Should start now. Well, we'll see. That should. Should. It's got a misfire. 
<laughs> this is the first time you heard it start and run. Okay, we're making progress. Okay, we're making progress. If you put the relay back in though, it won't... Where's that relay? There it is. It won't like it, huh? Let's just do a quick check with the test light. Test light from battery positive to that control pin. Right there. To turn the key on, crank. Nothing there. Okay, so the PCM is still not grounding the pin for the crank relay, but the car actually starts and runs, so we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so we plug in the scanner, Jim hit, hit clear codes, car starts and runs. Let's try it again. I think the computer just needed a kick in the ass, right Jim? I guess. Off. Key on. No misfire. <laughs> How about that? It purrs like a kitten. Let's just double check these grounds. Do a little wiggle wiggle. Fixed. So I guess a little variable there. You know, we fixed the ground. Turn the key off, turn the key on, didn't crank. Plug in the scanner, reset the computer. The damn thing works. So I think I think that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's the lesson of the day? <laughs> Clicky relays equals bad ground, right Jim? <laughs> yeah, I figured that. <laughs> that's about it. I just didn't want to go, huh? Yeah. So we'll we'll button her back up and thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.